Now that we have our neck blank cut out, we need to figure out where we're going to put this scarf. There's two different ways to do a scarf joint. You can either have the scarf cut and then put this on the bottom and have that be the second part of the headstock. Or you can cut the scarf further down here, flip it, and have the scarf be in the neck. Obviously if it's in the neck, after you've carved it, you're going to see a, uh, a parabolic shape in the back of the neck like you see on guitars such as Ibanez and the like. Um, whereas if we're going to be veneering the head plate and the back strap, it's very easy to hide this scarf in the headstock. So uh, since that's what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to put my scarf in my headstock. And as you can see here, I've written that this blank is exactly 31 30 seconds inch thick. So what I can do is I know that I need a, uh, a 13 degree angle, and that's this angle here, same as there, since these are parallel, these uh, faces. So that's 13 degrees, and that's 13 degrees. And knowing that, I can take 31, 30 seconds, 13 degrees, and I can find out the length of this section so that I can draw this accurately. And what I've done here, I've just drawn a, uh, a triangle and it has these different measurements and as you can see here I just used a little trig to figure out that that length should be 4.19 inches or 4.2 is accurate enough for our uses uh, now I can take it to the bandsaw and go ahead and cut that out So there's a couple ways that you can do this. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of the both ways that I use. Um, we're going to start by I um, I flattened this out because um, if you remember, this was the bottom of our cut when we cut out the neck blank. So this was also rough from the bandsaw, so I just flattened this out. You can do that with a hand plane, your sander, whatever, it doesn't matter. And um, you also need to do the same to the back of this. This is the tricky part, because you can't just send this through your sander, because you've got this thick heel. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back to my um, safety planer. I'm going to safety plane that up. So now that both of our uh, surfaces that were once uneven are now even, we can take these and match them up so that the angles um, are going together. And what we're going to do is, uh, this is flooring tape, duck brand flooring tape. It's extremely strong. It's this weave pattern. Um, I mean, it's strong enough that you can actually use it instead of nails and stuff when you're uh, doing templates. It's, it sticks real well. It just takes a little bit. So I'm going to cut this in half. And I'm literally just going to double stick tape these two together. Like so. Alright, and that's what we now have. Next we're going to go to the joiner. And you may be saying, well, don't joiners need long uh, pieces of wood to go through them? Check what the minimum distance your joiner can take is. Um, mine can take six inches. And as of right now, this is now a seven and a quarter inches long. So this can actually go through the joiner. Obviously, use all the safety precautions when using a joiner. Uh, I don't want to mess anything up. But uh, let's get over there. Hold it flat against the fence because if this isn't flat, 
it may skew your uh, your scarf, which is a bad thing. Switch this around a bit. Finalize this scarf. Um, Joiner does a good job getting rid of a lot of the rough stuff, but it's not a. In this case, it is not a fine working um, tool. So what I've done is I put a little spacer here to make this thickness the same as the heel. Um, clamp this down and it puts pressure on this board to keep this in place. And now I'm just going to use the number five smoothing plane to perfect my uh, scarf angles, and then we'll go to glue up. Now we're going to be gluing up the scarf joint. Um, a lot of people seem to have problems with this. Um, I know I did when I first started. It's a little strange to be gluing something um, that has that's this pointy, as well as has a tendency to slip around because of the lubrication of the glue. So um, a guy named David Mike actually taught me this technique, and uh, it seems to work pretty well. I'm happy with it so far. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to lock that end of the neck blank down with a clamp so that it it's not going anywhere. Then what we're going to do is we're going to apply glue to this surface here, put it there to about where we want it so that it's not moving either, clamp this. So that means both of these are not going to be able to slide and then we're going to use clamping calls, um, one for the back and then the one that we do on the top, um, since this is where the joint is, glue can squeeze out here. So we're actually going to cover this in tin foil or wax paper works so that um, our call does not get glued to our neck blank. And then we're going to use a bunch of really nice hard clamps to clamp that in place. When it comes to type mon, you can never have too many clamps. It's just a rule. Epoxy, not so much. You can have too many clamps with epoxy. Wood glues, nope. And here's what it should look like after the clamps come off. If um, got a little glue here, or one part sticks out more than the other, you can uh, send this through the joiner. And keep in mind that every time you send the face through the joiner, the face of the headstock, it moves this um, line here, your nut line, further forward this way. So each time you plane this, you lose a little bit of length. Whereas each time you plane the face where the fretboard goes, you gain a little bit of length. So if you've got a, a thick fretboard, uh, sorry, a thick neck blank, you can actually regain some of the distance on the face that you lost during the scarf by sending it through the joiner. Or if your nut is too far away from the end of your board, then obviously if you've got enough heel, you can just take it off at this end. If you don't have enough heel, you can just plane the face. <laughs> 